give a little background on the Veterans Justice Outreach Specialist Program because about eight or nine years ago, I, I went to a mental health housing conference and sat next to a gentleman who told me he was starting, the VA was starting veterans courts. And when I asked him what he meant, because I knew there was a benefits courts of appeals, what he described, I said, well, that's a mental health court or a drug court with a vet in it. So I said, why don't you adopt the model that we already have because you don't then have to reinvent the wheels. So uh, I was involved in a group that put together a big national conference for the VA Big Shots to sell them on the idea. And then I was appointed to a conference in, in Washington that put together the Veterans Justice Outreach Specialist Program. How many in this room know what a VJO is? Okay. I want you all to leave here knowing what a VJO is because it's one of our most valuable resources that Ohio has so little tapped. I cannot believe the counties after counties I go into, how few people, few people know about it. So what the VJO does, and I'll, she'll go into more detail, is basically if you have a veteran that's arrested, it doesn't matter if you have a vet court or not, you have access to a VJO, and it's a direct line to all sorts of services cutting through tons of red tape. And every time you have a veteran in your court that is not identified, you're using local resources that could go to somebody else locally instead of federal resources. So I tell those county commissioners, I flop that little book at them and say, these are all the programs you're sitting on the table, and these are one of the most valuable resources. I think you've been with us from the very beginning, have you not? And I, I call on her a lot to speak at events, and I want to talk to you before you leave today because i got another one for you. <laughs> so, so this is so important to make sure you get the word back to your communities of what a valuable resource we have that is so underutilized and is free. Mary? Thank you so much for having me here today. I, I did start with the program uh, back in 2009. Uh, it was a pilot program that we started, and uh, Justice Stratton was uh, there at our conference to kind of uh, help us get things started, and, and we did uh, rely a lot on her experience. Um, the purpose of the VJO program is uh, to prevent some homelessness among our justice-involved veterans and link them to services uh, within the VA and also within the community. We work and collaborate a lot with our community partners. Uh, we don't want to sit there and duplicate services. So uh, we, we do uh, really rely on, um, especially when we look into our rural counties. Uh, rural counties that may not have as many resources there uh, we don't have veterans facilities that are easily accessible for veterans to come into. So we will partner with our community uh, agencies to help provide um, those services that we can't. Um, there are an abundance of uh, services that the VA provides. I did provide some uh, booklets here as well as a, a um, trifold um, brochure on the Franklin County services, but basically those services that are provided within that are all things that any veteran can get in touch with. We do try to go into the jails on a regular basis. Um, I know uh, some of you, we've, we actually get your databases for your who's in the jail at that time uh, so that we can go in and meet with them on a a regular basis, uh, try to find out have they accessed VA services before, are they eligible for that, uh, the VA health care, and if they're not eligible for VA health care, because there are some um, criteria that veterans do have to meet, um, we will link them to other community resources to get those things met. Uh, what I mean is a veteran, in order to receive the VA health care benefits, has to have at least two years of honorable service in order to receive the full uh, extent of what the VA can provide. Uh, if they have what we call an other than honorable, meaning they had some difficulty while they were in the service, uh, maybe uh, uh, were released early because of mental health, uh, uh, even some uh, things such as uh, with our LGBT, LBGT uh, community. Uh, some of them at that time uh, were outed and they were given other than honorables. Right now we're trying to upgrade some of those folks and get them into services. They may be reluctant to um, working with us at this time because of some of the experiences they had, but we're really trying to change that around. We have a very strong community within the VA system. For those that are other than honorable that we cannot um, 
provide services for. We do have other programs uh, with an other than honorable. As long as they don't have a dishonorable, uh, they may be eligible for some transitional housing. Uh, and uh, in those programs, we have grant per diem programs, uh, which can provide up to two years of housing for veterans. And some of those grant per diem programs will also provide some substance abuse treatment and case management. Along with uh, another new initiative that we have, which is the supportive services for veterans and families. Those are contracted through our, uh, some of our community partners like Volunteers of America, um, Salvation Army, uh, Goodwill Industries, they have some of these uh, uh, funds and what that is is to assist veterans in getting rapidly rehoused. We're trying to move away from just housing people in, in shelters um, and try to get them moved into something that they can uh, be stabilized in. Uh, amongst our mental health folks, uh, some of them have such severe mental uh, illnesses that pl placing them in a shelter is very, very difficult for them. Um, there may be too much uh, stimulation there, which exacerbates the symptoms that they have. Um, they also may be fearful of others that are there uh, within the community, fear about being, uh, being assaulted or uh, even um, preyed upon uh, for other things. So um, what we do is try to get them rapidly rehoused. Within the VJO program, we provide these services amongst others. Our focus is, however, in starting the veterans treatment courts. Um, and as Justice Stratton had mentioned, we, uh, you don't have to uh, have a veterans treatment court in, in order to receive our services. Most of the facilities, the VA facilities, all have at least one Veterans Justice Outreach Specialist um, that will actively go out into the, the jails uh, and also connect with uh, the program, the Healthcare for Reentry, which is our uh, prison program, which actually began first in 2005, um, and kind of helps to fill that gap so that when they're coming from prison, and they're re-entering into the community, they're connected with us, we get them reconnected with health care services, treatment needs, housing, whatever they may need. Um, but with the VJO program, um, what we're trying to do is, uh, you know, identify those that have never accessed resources before. A number of veterans will not see themselves as being veterans, or there may be some reasons why they don't want to share that information. Uh, Justice Stratton was great about getting the word out uh, that when we ask our veterans when we do the intake uh, that uh, this is a, uh, a veteran, instead of saying, are you a veteran, we ask, um, have you served in the military? And that kind of opens it up to a lot of things. Um, so that we're not just, because if, uh, if they haven't served honorably, they won't include themselves. If they had uh, not completed all their time, they think they're not eligible for anything. So what we will actually do is, is uh, educate them. Uh, we don't want the community to try to make those assessments about who's eligible and who's not. So what we ask you to do is to give us a call. One of the more recent things that we've been doing is a project called Veterans Reentry Identification System, or VRSS. Um, we've used this um, in the prisons. Um, we also started it uh, here recently with the Franklin County. Um, and what it is is a database that when somebody comes into the jail or comes into the prison, their Social Security and their date of birth and their name is put into a database uh, with the VA and it's set up nationally and uh, national will come back identify anybody who has had military service doesn't matter whether they had a, an honorable dishonorable but they, it will be identified and then it'll spit back the information to the veterans justice outreach specialist and then we will go into the community into those jails and try to get connected with them um, we haven't got this in all the systems, it's kind of a new, uh, we had some kinks there, but we're working through that, and uh, it's been working out pretty well. I know in the, uh, probably the last three weeks, um, we had about 20 veterans that were identified just in the Franklin County, and we were able to get out there and see a number of them. Um, unfortunately, sometimes 
they slip through us because if they're just there overnight or whatever, but we do try to get the information with them and try to follow up with them if they've had any uh, contact with the courts or not. Um, the Justice Outreach uh, Program um, is, is one that, uh, like I said, partners with the community. And uh, with the Veterans Justice Outreach Program and working with those treatment courts, um, we have one here in Franklin County, uh, which works within the municipal court. We have approximately about 16 that have been certified um, by the specialized dockets uh, as being uh, certified uh, to provide those services. We have about another four uh, that are in, um, uh, in the process of getting certified and hopefully many more. Uh, one of the reasons why what I have uh, is I'll have talk with the judges or talk with other community members and they say, well, we don't have that many veterans in our community. Um, so we're, we're, I, or we're adequately um, providing these services through mental health or drug court. We don't see why we need to add another veterans treatment court. As just as Stratton mentioned, this is saving the, com uh, the county a lot of money if they do utilize it. It's free health care once they're released. That We can't provide the services except for in reach while they're in jail. But once they've been released, we link them up with health care services, uh, mental health care. We also will uh, substance abuse services, um, housing, whatever their needs may, uh, may be, we're going to try to connect them with that. Uh, so these are a lot of monies that are, are not um, being utilized. I know uh, one member that I'm looking at right now from our Stepping Up Committee uh, called me a couple weeks ago with someone who had never been uh, identified herself as a veteran, was not uh, working with our VA. Uh, she was entitled to, uh, to benefits. Uh, she had a, uh, a discharge that um, presented some problems. We're in the process of getting that upgraded. But then I was had the opportunity to say to her, hey, do you know that you're eligible for these things? You're eligible for housing. So we were able to get her connected um, with um, the uh, Metropolitan Housing Authority there and also access those SSVF funds so that that could assist her in getting uh, settled much more easily. Um, I get really nervous in these things in case you haven't noticed here. Uh, so there's, there's just so many things that we have uh, to offer. We have uh, coming up uh, next month in October our stand down. Uh, in our stand down uh, here in Franklin County, that's on October 18th, by the way, we'll have that at the convention center. Uh, we actually have a little mini court that comes in there. Judge Barrows from our Franklin County Municipal Court will come in and he will actually uh, look at vacating uh, some of the warrants that may be outstanding there and that's one of the things that we can do um, because that's a barrier to a lot of folks when they're trying to get housing. Uh, so what we try to do is work with the public defenders and the judges in getting those, um, uh, you know, set up new court dates. It's not like we're wiping them clean but setting up another court date, or in some cases, if they're really petty things and it was re, uh, involved someone who's seriously mentally ill, has no income, we may get that vacated uh, so that they can move on and we can get them stabilized. Uh, so we'll have that on October uh, 18th, as I said. Uh, there will be a number of community partners um, there that, that work with us. NAMI will be there. Uh, as well as Ohio Mental Health. We'll also have the Legal Aid Society that will be there, as well as Operation Legal Help Ohio, um, which also partner with us on a regular basis. Um, Operation Legal Help Ohio and the Legal Aid Society provide legal clinics uh, every Thursday for us here in Franklin County. They're served at the, um, the Veterans Health Clinic. Uh, they can come in at 9 o'clock in the morning. They can uh, meet with a number of attorneys there for brief advice. And in some cases, if they need additional help, um, what we will do is refer them to Operation Legal Help or a pro bono attorney that can help them uh, to resolve those issues. 
Uh, I know a number of cases, uh, very, very complicated cases that we've had, uh, especially like around housing and that where somebody's being evicted or uh, uh, that we've been able to uh, resolve those issues for them so that we can get them housed. Um, as I said, there's a, a number of uh, brochures up here, um, and my number is on the back there. If you uh, care to get in touch with me at any time, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. How many Thank you. jails do we have in Ohio? Um, it has been changing a lot. We've tried to, we have approximately about uh, anywhere from two to four per medical center. I have one in Cincinnati, Cleveland, Dayton. Uh, Dayton, I think, only has one at this time. Uh, we have three, however, one of them is out um, at this time on leave. Um, but uh, hopefully she'll be back here within the next six to eight weeks to even though they are at a center in a particular city, they serve all the surrounding counties, so you're, yeah. all of Ohio is covered. Yeah, um, and we also uh, partnered in here recently with uh, uh, Vizin 11. Um, in the Veterans Administration, everything's broken up into Vizins. Mm -hmm. And Indiana, Michigan, and Kentucky were part of uh, Vizin 11. We've now combined those, so now we cover the entire state of Ohio is, is covered with VJOs. So, thank you. So much. Thank you. So remember, you don't need a veterans court, free service, lots of free services. Don't pay local dollars what you can be getting from VA services. So thank you so much.